In this video we show you how we have created the plants for the 3D scene. Our goal, most possible variety with as little as possible effort. For all the different plants we only used one material and one texture. We decided for all the leaves on the plants we don't use alpha texture, but instead we model everything with polygons. One reason we did that in this way was that we want to avoid render errors, which can happen if you use alpha channels in your textures. A big inspiration for us how to create such a meadow or the plants in general was the Grass Essentials pack from BlenderGuru.com. So if you're a lazy person and don't want to create all the plants on yourself, this Grass Essentials pack may be something for you. Now let's get back to our plants. First of all, we went outside with a camera and shot some photos of grass, plants, leaves, trees, etc. Very useful if you take the shots of, for example, plants and the leaves, use a white sheet of paper and place it behind the leaves, then you easily can cut them out inside a photo manipulation program, like Photoshop or GIMP. After we've chosen some of the plants and cut them out, we all place them on one 2048 by 2048 big texture. And then we adjusted the brightness and the contrast so that everything looks quite uniform and you don't have any extreme highlights or dark spots in your texture. For creating the texture we used Photoshop, but instead also you can use the free software GIMP or another photo manipulation program. By the way, a good edited texture should just have color and structure. Shadow, glossiness and so on we all do in Blender later on. As mentioned before, for the background we don't use an alpha channel, but instead we colorized it in the color of the individual plant element. That's important for the UV mapping, because then you don't get ugly edges if you don't put your UV map in the right position. As next step, we start the modeling. We use our texture as model reference, background images you find in the properties menu. Then we started to model the different parts of the plants using the background image and also we take care that we don't use too many polygons. That's important because we want to use a lot of those plants and if you have too many vertices and faces inside one plant, then it can be very hard for Blender to calculate your big scene. And also the low poly method is not really a problem because the plants will be relatively small in the image. And if you use some plants in the foreground, you always can use a subsurf modifier to have a higher resolution. To bring the texture on the object, we have to create a UV map and for that we press U and select project from view. But this only works if you view your object from the right position. And then we have created a very basic material using this texture just for us to see the texture on the object. This is not the final material. In a later video we'll show you how to create a nice looking plant material. After we have modeled all the different parts of one plant, we put it together. For that it's always useful to enable proportional editing in edit mode, so you can edit your objects smoothly. You find the option in the header of the 3D view or just press O. The leaf of the plant we duplicate and vary it a bit so that every leaf looks a little bit different. The same thing we do for the blossom on the top of the plant. Very useful is to set the origin of the different parts of the plant to the beginning so that you can rotate this even better if you position it on the plant. After we have positioned all the different parts of the plant, we select all and join it using Ctrl J and then we can duplicate it and create some variations of it. To keep our effort as low as possible, we just created a few plant species but also some variations of the same plant. And all these plants we use later for our 3D scene. Important for the creating process is that the plants are looking realistic. And for that you just have to study the plants in the real life. For example, many plants have some dry leaves near the ground. 
Another very important thing if you create a bunch of columns, don't place them all in the same origin, just leave a little distance between all those columns. So you will have much more realistic results if you use this plant for your particle system. But how we use these plants for particle systems to create a big meadow, we show you in another video.